Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to start looking at databases. Our objectives for this video is that after watching you should be able to explain the purpose of a database. You should be able to identify elements of both SQL and NoSQL databases and you should be able to differentiate between the two main types of databases. So first off, what are databases? A database, DB, is basically just a structured collection of data. That's really all it is. It's just a bunch of data that is stored in a structured way. Usually, and you can make that usually and always with kind of like an asterisk that says 99.9 .9 repeating percent of the time. Databases are controlled by a database management system or DBMS. Um, examples of DBMSs include MySQL, Oracle, MongoDB, CouchDB, Redis, I mean everything. They've even, you've even got some weird ones like Unidata or things like that. Usually database, the term, refers to both, kind of the combination of the database and the DM, DBMS, because the database, just the structured data itself, is pretty much useless without that DBMS, which is used to access the data. There are really two main types of databases. There's the relational databases. You'll normally hear them called the SQL, or sometimes people pronounce it SQL databases. And then there's non-relational databases, or no SQL, or no SQL. Relational databases, or SQL databases, or SQL databases, um, they were created back in the 70s. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it's the language that you use to access data in these databases. It's a very, honestly, it's a pretty straightforward language, all things considered. I think they did a very good job structuring it out and making it pretty relatively easy to understand. An example might be select all from uh, users where username is Bob, or something like that. So it's, it's the actual query language, generally speaking, is pretty readable for even for people who aren't programmers. So, so SQL, I think they did a very good job creating it. And SQL has been really the only option. There were some others. I mean, you had like Unidata and things like that, but nobody really uses those. They're very, very niche. SQL databases basically store data in really big tables of rows and columns. I like to think of them like big Excel spreadsheets. You've got a bunch of rows, a bunch of columns, and then there, there's tables that contain those rows and columns. So you might have a database that has one, two, ten, a thousand tables, and each of those tables is going to have basically a, an Excel spreadsheet that has rows and columns. They use unique keys to identify these tables and these rows in order to get the data off of them. Um, SQL is very, very structured. You have to define every single column whenever you create a new table. When you create this table, you have to say exactly what columns are going to be in this table. If a month, a year, 10 years down the line, you need to add columns, you can't do that. The, the kind of the defining feature of SQL databases or relational databases is that you can easily link these tables together. You can have, for example, a table of users and you can have a table of comments. And then inside of users, you can have a column called comments, and then basically just import all the comments from the comments table that match a certain um, criteria, such as the user ID. It's very easy in SQL databases to establish relationships among data. Examples of SQL databases include MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, Windows, um, Windows Server SQL, I believe, is, or Windows SQL, Microsoft SQL Server. I forget what the technical term is, but it's Microsoft's version. There's a ton of them. Non-relational databases are a much newer beast. Um, they emerged in the late 2000s. It's only been 10 or 15 years since they really came out, and they were created kind of as an alternative to the SQL databases. The main difference, like the, if, if I was to boil down the difference between the two to one thing, it would be that NoSQL databases are not rigidly structured. In other words, data can be easily modified on the fly. It was also designed to scale very well and to distribute among different servers in different locations called sharding. S-H-A-R-D-I-N-G. So it's, it's a lot easier to scale up than SQL databases are. However, it's, they're oftentimes a little bit less stable in comparison to SQL databases. They just haven't been around. SQL has 30 years on them. So that, I mean, they've had a lot of time to um, work on stability. And also they're not as standardized as SQL databases. If, you're, if you learn SQL, the language, you can work with pretty much any SQL database with very, very, very little ramp up time. You can jump from MariaDB to Postgres to MySQL to Oracle to easily and quickly without really having to much of a learning curve at all. However, with NoSQL databases, 
there's much less standardization. Obviously, with as with any programming concept, if you learn it well in one, you can jump to another relatively easily. But there's a there's a bigger learning curve if you go from Mongo to Couch, for example, than there is to go from um, MySQL to Postgres. And we're going to differentiate even further among NoSQL databases. There's two main types. There's key value stores and there's document stores. Key value stores are very, very simple. Really, all they do is just store key value pairs. That's really, that's it. That's, that's it. It's very, very useful for simple data. So if you're just storing usernames or your, and passwords or something, then it's, it's super useful, very easy. It has excellent performance. They're wonderful for very simple data. However, if your data becomes pretty complex, you're going to start to have problems because it doesn't have a lot of the more advanced features that you get from the other type, the document stores. Examples of the key value stores are Amazon's DynamoDB and Redis, among others. Document stores are where we're going to focus because that's we're going to use a document store, MongoDB, and basically it stores data as JSON documents within collections. SQL databases have tables. No SQL databases, especially document stores, have collections. Examples of document stores include MongoDB and CouchDB. There's another major difference between SQL and NoSQL, and it's not something that's technical, it's the philosophical difference. Kind of like the way that, that people approach data when they use these two different types of databases. In SQL, every piece of data should be stored one time, and then it should be connected with other pieces of data. In NoSQL, you store your data in a format that makes sense and is easy to use, even if you have the same data in there multiple times. That's just kind of the philosophy of the two. SQL, like I said, is very structured, very planned out beforehand. No SQL is, hey, we've got the username in there twice. Who really cares? It makes it easier on me as the developer to use, so I'm fine with it. To give you an example of how this might look in either type of database, let's look at a newspaper article, like a New York Times article or something like that. If they were being stored in SQL, each piece of that article would be broken into its disparate parts and then stored in different tables. For example, you might have a table called article text, and each row of that table has an ID, a unique ID, and, and it might have the text of that article, and that's it. Then you might have an author's table, where the author has an ID, they have a username, they probably have a password, and then they have another column that says articles. And in there is basically the list of the IDs of all the articles they've written. And that, that establishes a relationship between the author and the article. You might have comments text, comments authors, comments replies, all these, they're individual databases, and then they're simply linked together to establish that relationship. That's where that relational database comes from. You have all these things stored in different tables, but then by using the unique IDs, you establish the relationships between them. However, in a NoSQL, usually you store the whole thing as a single document. It follows the JSON format. So here's an example. You, for the whole article, you might have an ID, and then you might give it a title, and then a text, and then an author, and then you might have a comments, which ends up being an array, and each comment in that array is an object with an ID, a username, a text, and any replies to that um, particular one would also be objects with IDs and usernames and text and so on and so forth. So this is a lot easier to work with from the development side, generally speaking, than um, the SQL databases for things like this, because we don't care if we store things in more than one place. It doesn't really matter. You can kind of fake relationships in NoSQL. Like I could create a um, article collection and a comments collection, and then in the comments, all here, all this would be is an array of, of IDs. And on the server end, I could say for the comments, what I'm displaying to the users, query the other one, the comments collection, and get all of the items that have th these IDs or something like that. You can do that. Generally speaking, that's not a great idea, because um, if you're going to want to do that type of relational stuff, just use an SQL database. But you can. You can kind of fake it, if, if, if you will. For this course, we are going to use MongoDB. MongoDB, if you remember, is a document store NoSQL database. It's by far the most popular um, NoSQL database, and we're actually going to use their wonderful cloud storage, MongoDB Atlas. So we'll get you set up with that in the next video, and we'll get rolling. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.